So I'm just living my life and doing comedy on Zoom, which is really fun. It's like doing comedy at my mom's church to complete silence. And I'm just like, and I'm like, Lord, I will serve you. Lord, put me in the game. I just want to work. And I'm just trapped at home with these kids. Let me out, Lord. And so one day I just look over and it was 2021. So I'm going back on tour a little bit. And my, my bedroom wall just started turning all brown of my house that I own. And I hate being a grown up because when there's a bill to pay, it's you. And that's horrible. <laughs> and my wall just turns brown. And the next thing you know, there's a guy out of my house and they're knocking on the walls. And they said that swear word that I don't ever want to hear. Mold. Okay. They said, I said mold. I was like, the devil sent mold to my house, you know? And I was, I was devastated, you guys, because it's my house and there's all this, they had to tear up my whole bedroom and it was just a really hard time. And I know that sometimes seems first world problems, but after everything, and I was starting to go back on the road and, and then I had this gig, this one gig in two different states and three days before they canceled the gig, okay? So they canceled the gig and I can't go. I'm like, you bunch of chickens, you should have the show anyway. And so um, I was mad. I was mad. And then the show that I was supposed to do that weekend in Indiana canceled. So like within five days, I had two shows canceled and I lost a lot of my income that I thought, because you know how you plan how God's going to take care of you? I planned it. I'm like, God's going to take care of me. He's going to just pay me back with these, you know, because I'm faithful. And I kept tithing, you guys. I never stopped. That's the thing. I really believe. And so I'm in the airport and I'm in Chicago and I remembered this teaching I heard on giving. And I was like, you can give and in anger. So I was angry at the devil. And I have a lot of money to give, but I was like, devil, you watch me. You can't shut me up and you can't stop me from giving. So I just electronically tithed to my church. And I was like, I'm going to watch God get me out of this. Now, nobody knew, but I just said it in my mind. God's going to get me out of this. I'm going to watch God and I'm going to tithe my way out of the situation because I've seen people that have done it that I know and I respect. So I land the plane and I get a call and it's my insurance company. And they knew about all the damages to my house. And they said, your house is really, really damaged. You're, you know, you might have mold. It could be dangerous. You might have to move out for three months. So we're going to pay your mortgage for three months, you guys. We're going to pay your mortgage. Yes. And I have enough faith that I just slept in the living room and I didn't even move out for three months. Because that's what kind of faith I have. And then God gave me my money back. But you guys, I've had so many of these situations. I have so many. Like, because what I felt, and you know, I'm like, oh, can I talk about money? But, you know, first of all, money matters, right? And we need money to survive. And I don't have the kind of existence where we all store it up. I've been living like the Israelites my whole professional life. That every day I get up and God's like, I got you. I'm like, but no, you don't. He's like, yes, I do. I'm like, well, you have me yesterday. Do you have me today? Because my faith is so lacking. But when I go through these trials and they do keep coming, I keep remembering that God's got me because he's always had me. He's got me when my mom was going through breast cancer for the third time. He's got me and he's had for, for 11 years as she's walked through her journey to healing and she is cancer free today. One day at a time. He's got me when my kid was in the NICU and they said she was never going to walk like the other kids. She was never going to talk like the other kids. She was going to be mentally disabled. And then he had me when the fifth grade teacher called me last year and said, Ruby Joy is the highest honor student in the class. Because God's got me. I didn't know the day or the hour that God has got me. And sometimes, like I've told you guys the last time I was here, he doesn't have me because I'm on Facebook bragging about my side hustle, okay? He doesn't have me because I have the coolest Instagram in the world. He has me because I'm down on my face doing the ugly cry. I'm down on my face and I told you guys. I told you this time when I was down on my face and I was doing the ugly cry and I was like, where are you, Lord? And then you find candy under your bed and you know he's there, okay? <laughs> and you find that sweater you've been looking for, you know? But God has got us when we are down and he will tell you to do radical things. He'll tell you to give when you don't have it to give because he knows what's gonna happen on the other side of that. He wants to know if he can trust me. And I've told God a million times, Lord, I've read Job. That's a terrible testimony. I don't want what mine feels long enough, God. Okay. <laughs> I've been on this planet over 40 years. I, I well over 40, but let's just say 40. We'll round down. But 
God wants to know if he can trust me. So sometimes I can sit up on the stage and tell you about all the things he's given me, but I, I, I can't make it make sense to you until I tell you about all the things the devil has tried to steal. So the more the enemy is trying to steal from you, the bigger the testimony is on the other side for you. Do you understand me? I don't care if it's a diagnosis. I don't care if you lost a job. I don't care if you're a single mom and you think you don't know how that rent is going to come. God may just put a check in the mail or he just may have somebody that comes and says, I'm going to pay that rent. Because when you give to him, he outgives you. That's the bottom line. You cannot outgive him. You cannot be in faith and not be paid back. That's just how it works. And that's not just for the fancy preachers. That's for you. And some of you needed to hear that tonight because you're going through the river. You're going through the storm. And God is like, I've got you. But you're standing on the edge of the Red Sea. Don't you think that those people of God were standing on the edge of the Red Sea? They didn't know he was going to part the Red Sea. They were looking for a rowboat, okay? They were looking for a helicopter. And God is like, I've got you, but you got to jump in, okay? You got to jump in because I'm going to make a way for you where it looks like there is no way. So some of us really need to hear that right now, that God is about to make a way for you when you think that there is no way.